This Cyber Monday celebrates softness this season by stocking up on your favorite underwear, loungewear, and pajamas at Tommy John's Cyber Monday sale. Going on right now. Still recovering from Thanksgiving? The underwear a little uncomfortable? This Cyber Monday get comfy with huge deals on new Tommy John underwear, loungewear, and pajamas. Tommy John's loungewear is guaranteed to fit perfectly with comfy, non-pilling, micro-modal fabric, meaning no lint balls or fuzz. Ugh, I hate that, especially when you're having sex. That's the worst thing to hear. A luxury, soft, tri-blend fabric with flexible four-way stretch. Shop Tommy John's Cyber Monday sale now. Get 33% off everything plus free shipping at tommyjohn.com slash ykwd it's one of tommy john's biggest sales of the year 33 percent off everything plus free ship this show is sponsored by better help hey man listen life doesn't come with the user's manual so when it's not working for you it's normal to feel stuck navigating any of life's challenges can suck all right you feel unsure you don't know what to do you can't make a decision well, career changes, new relationships, being a parent, being a boyfriend, a husband, uh, a, a mother, a, a girlfriend, it can be overwhelming. As the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professional licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. Plus, it's affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. If things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime. It couldn't be simpler. No waiting room, no traffic, no finding a spot, no endless searching for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash dude. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash dude. Yeah, baby, we're starting the podcast right now. We're back. You know what, dude, live. Welcome, everybody, to the show. YKWD. I started the social media and podcast. <laughs> the fact. The YKWD podcast. YKWD is back again. Old school, back in the day, where it all started. Before them all. YKWD. This podcast is so fun and crazy. It has no rules. Shut up. You're ruining this. Where's the ball man? Sorry, it's a comedy podcast. This isn't NPR. That's what this podcast does. Is there any better show? This is the original. Original. Hey, what's up, everybody? Robert Kelly here. I am in Cleveland. Uh, well, they, I don't even know what they call the motherland, the the heartland, the uh, the land is uh, something they try and throw at us. Yeah. But. Uh, uh, you know, Mistake by the Lake. We mistake by the Lake I like a lot. Mistake, we're in Cleveland, YKWD in Cleveland, the Mistake by the Lake. Sounds like an abortion. Um, <laughs> we're here, uh, I'm, I got one of my uh, oldest friends in the business, uh, and I love him to death. Bill Squire is on today's episode of YKWD. Make sure you subscribe and hit the like button and comment. I don't even care if you don't like the episode. That's fine because my fans will attack you and you attack them and then the algorithm climbs and then I become successful. <laughs> I guess that's how the kids tell me it works. So make sure you do all that stuff. And patreon.com slash Robert Kelly. If you ever want to be in the chat and you want to see it before anybody else Go there, become a a supporter of my Patreon. So what's up, buddy? Not much. Isn't that great how the algorithm doesn't care if people hate you? They just want them to engage. It, yeah. It makes me insane. I don't even understand it. It's, But I, it has to go back to why cop show, the cop, show Cops, yeah. Ricky Lake, Jerry Springer. There's something happened to us. We went from um, these uh, Donahue, you know, we went from a like a regular little talk show where they mm -hmm. interviewed. If you ever watched those shows back in the day, oh, of course, Everybody it's the did, most boring thing ever. Right, but they were engaging because there wasn't anything like it then. Right, and you're always just waiting for that car crash moment. Well, yeah, they, well, every once in a while you get something big that would happen, and if you missed it, you felt like a putz. Well, we went from like these boring interviewing actors and people where there was never any controversy to right. Jerry Springer, mm -hmm. something, and we were like. Oh, uh, we want that. Yeah. We want that. Who was the other guy? Ro Downey Jr. Not Robert Downey Jr. Uh, who's the, uh, the, the, the dads? You're not the father. No, Maury. 
No, 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 not oh, Maury. Before, before Maury? Morton Downey Jr. Morton Downey Jr. Yeah. Morton Downey Jr. was the first. Remember him? I don't even know that. I mean, I know the name. I don't know what his show was. Dude, we're going to put a, a link right now and okay. uh, put a little. I wish we'd get a video, but it, dude, it's a Morton Downey Jr. show. He was, uh, he had a set, mm -hmm. just like an open studio. Yeah. And he had chairs and shit, and he smoked, he chain smoked. He had a, a silver a bowl with water in it on stage just to throw his cigarettes out. That's how much he smoked. It's fucking nuts. And he would rant. And he had these big lips and he would just attack people and just flip out and make these big long rants and monologues that he would do. And this is just like a syndicated show? This is on TV, syndicated. Wow. And he would have people on and scream at him, you're an idiot! Yeah. And, the, and it was unbelievable. That's when I think this country snapped and broke. Was the Morton Downey Jr. Morton show. Morton Downey Jr. show is when, and then, you know, Jerry Springer, and then, you know, I mean, Howard Stern uh, with radio. Yeah. Well, and Howard Stern, so I, I would listen a little bit to Howard Stern, but I got more into the E! show that was on. Remember the E! The, the behind show? the scenes. Yeah, well, it was, like, they'd play clips of the show. They'd show, like, the yeah. guy trying to start the, set the fart record, and they'd right. have porn stars on. And it was at that time where you were still... Like seeing pixelated boobs was still cool. Yeah, like you're still turned on by it just because like you're like, oh my god! She, imagine if you were in that studio, right? And this girl pulled her big boobs out. That'd be insane. Crazy. Yeah, but yeah, and then it, we we took it too far. Oh yeah. How it started at the beginning was amazing. Yeah. But then we took it too far. We needed to see behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. We needed to see the boobs. Right. And then we needed to hear the swears. And the, yeah. And as soon as you could say, whatever fuck, you want. Yeah. It lost something. Like I remember being on Opie and Anthony for the first time when they went to. We went from FM to, yeah, to K Rock uh, to satellite. Yeah, yeah, we went from uh, K Rock to to oh, XM. Yeah. Oh, to XM. Okay, okay. And you could say whatever you wanted. Uh -huh. It was it wasn't as fun. Well, it's not as dangerous, and that's you know I've been working on radio, so I still have to play by those rules. Yeah, for for my job, and it there is something to it. And what's funny is there's people that are so used to you being uncensored, they don't understand that I have to be a little tricky to get away with some of the jokes and they're like well, just come out and say it i'm like i can't i have to i have to be silly about being dirty i can't right. just be graphically dirty yeah and, and and that's the fun of it is saying something that you're not supposed to say in that forum right it's like it's like making a dirty joke in church right yeah it's like you know it's like it's when a, it's you ever a priest swear uh, yeah, it, it, it blows your mind. Right. Or when your teacher says something outrageous. Well, it's like when my, my mom never swears, but then like out of nowhere, she'll drop. So I wasn't even here for this, but this is like a legendary story. I was raised Mormon. <laughs> my mom is and parents are still Mormon. Yeah. And my mom and my sister and my ex-wife were on a trip. And there was some story that had broken. They heard on the news about a guy hiding cameras in toilets. <laughs> And my sister and ex-wife were just kind of like ha like joking about it. And my mom from the back seat goes, that sick guy. He just wants to see all those cunts. <laughs> and like. <laughs> really? And she drops that and like, like, because she doesn't know how to <laughs> swear. So she goes way too hard to swear. <laughs> she picks the wrong. Yeah. Like, the wrong vagina word. Yeah. Way she could have pussy. Right. She could have pussy. Stink and, wrinkle. Yeah, and anything. And slice. She, and she goes right to beef cunt. curtains. Yeah. 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 And, she just, so and like my sister and uh, ex-wife were just blown away. Wow. And I, and like just knowing that she said it because they wouldn't even say that word. Yeah. And and she just goes, nah, the guy wants to see their cunts. And, and, and before we make this about a fucking freedom of speech shit, shut up. No, I don't. I think you should be able to say whatever you want. Right. I totally am fine with that. But there was there is something to. Finding, having to figure out how to talk about eating a chick's pussy or right. doing, you know, um, you know, whatever sex or anything, without saying it. Well, and that's one of the fun things about you know being on terrestrial radio. So we come up, with, especially when it happens organically, when you uh, come up with a term for something right. and it happens uh, organically. So when that Firefest documentary came out, yeah. and the guy was talking about how he was going to go and uh, blow someone so that they could get water. Yeah. Uh, he said something about signing documents, so that's what we call 
sucking dick on the radio as we call oh, sign your document yeah and get my document signed because it's you know <laughs> yeah it, it, like in the audience exactly gets it and it's it makes it fun exactly yeah. i want to get my i want to get my document signed while i'm in cleveland <laughs> how, how was last night there was a girl this, if this gets the right amount of views i'll uh yeah, you'll you'll yeah. sign my documents yeah, absolutely especially if we can uh yeah, we'll talk about that later. We'll talk about later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. nothing sure. hotter than getting a blowjob from an ex Mormon. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, it's uh, it. I like to uh, fulfill that fantasy for people. You know, <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's is that how you made you made your money, your extra money on the side. Oh yeah, you, the, the, way before OnlyFans and anything like that. I was you, just the. Uh, you want to watch a uh, ex Mormon jerk off? And they're like, do you still got the name tag? <laughs> do you have that stuff? No, I'm I'm really bad at keeping mementos and stuff like that. So I might have it in like a storage unit, but I don't. I don't know. You gotta get that out. Uh, I should. I should you go keep, through some stuff. Make sure you have that yeah. stuff, dude. That's crazy. I'm so bad at that stuff, though. Like I'm not. I'm not nostalgic about the past, so like I don't keep mementos really. I keep oh, everything. And if I do, this actually got me in trouble with my girlfriend because I had a picture, like a like a little uh, Polaroid from yeah. someone's birthday last year. Yeah. I just put it in my wallet after we took the picture. Forgot about it. And my girlfriend's going through my wallet. She sees this Polaroid of me and a girl. And she's like, what the fuck is that? I thought you guys were just friends. I'm like, we are just friends. And she's like, why do you keep that in your wallet? I'm like, I forgot it was in my wallet. <laughs> like, and it's a big deal to her. But to me, it means nothing. Right. And, it, it, you know, at least I, I, I keep, her. I keep everything. I, yeah. I, you know what else I keep? I keep uh, different fat clothes. Okay. And different skinny clothes. Like, I have leather jackets. Oh, I have those. From when I was skinny. Yeah. Like jackets, I have an Italian jacket. I have a snakeskin leather jacket. Nice. I remember I bought it with Patrice, and it was when I was getting chubby again. Mm -hmm. And I put it on. I go, "How's this look?" He goes, "It looks like a snake eating you." <laughs> <laughs> I actually put that in my act. But I have all. I have like every laminate. Yeah. Uh, really. I have all my laminates from everything. I keep all my laminates. I have stuff. I have posters from Torgasm. Maybe I just haven't done stuff I want to remember yet. <laughs> You no. no, like I just it, you like, have, you've done. Stuff. I've done a lot of stuff, and I but I'm just not that guy. Like I yeah. just, I mean, even the photos that I have of my family are in a box. They're not on my walls. Really, like the things the things that I have on my walls are just like silly things. Like it's you know I got uh, so you know when Mark Norman went viral for that interview with the girl on the news he, on the news. Yeah. yeah. So I've I've interacted with her a few times. I've been on her show a few times, and she commented on something and said I was the best. And so like that, I was like, oh, that would be funny to right. get framed. So I screenshot that comment and put that on my wall. And that's the kind of like silly yeah, dumb shit to me is <laughs> more than like a laminate to a festival or, or backstage pass or stuff like I that. I mean, you're at 100% right. Yeah. I mean, the, the this stuff that I have, I have T-shirts. I have a T-shirt from the uh, comedy festival I won mm -hmm. when I was in Al and the Monkeys. Yeah. With oh, Dane Cook. Yeah, yeah. I have that T-shirt. See, that's cool, though. It's cool, but it's I, I've never, in 20-something uh, years, yeah. probably almost 30 years, I've dragged this fucking thing around with me. Right, and now you have it, and then if- well, But it's still not, I'm not going to use you, it. You're not going to use it, but, I mean, it's, I think it's neat What to am I going to do? It. I'm going to show my son- Hey, you know what this is? Yeah, Dad. Anyways, listen, can you drop me off at the mall? Right. He doesn't give a fuck. Right. He, I mean, yeah, and that's kind of why it's just, but if it means something to you and you, and it's not like clutter, it's it's in storage. You have it if you want it, but if, I don't know. I, I don't know, dude. I think I, I, I kind of like your, I, I kind of admire where you just, you're not nostalgic about anything because life. Well, it gets me in a situation where people think I'm being, jealous or callous and stuff where i'm just not even jealous but like callous or just like unfeeling about things but i'm like nah i, I kind of have like a bit of a buddhist approach to things where it's just like no attachment to the things the memories are great i love the memories no it's but great the, but the the stuff is uh all expendable yeah i have my mother in me dude yeah. my mother in, so you go to my mother's house she goes pick out what you want when i die yeah she just has shit everywhere, everywhere. My grandmother did the same thing. She, my grandmother had this shelf in the kitchen, mm -hmm. and my grandfather would walk by, and he would, oh, oh, this shelf? I made that shelf. There's all this shit on it. Yeah. Yeah, she does. It's, it, she just keeps adding shit to it. <laughs> yeah. She goes, she's never touched any of this stuff. It just adds. It's, yeah, accumulates. And when she died, 
that that shit was nothing. Like right. nobody cared. When you die, right? You think mm-hmm. that people are gonna divvy up this shit right. and take that T-shirt. Remember this yeah. T-shirt, this thing, and these laminates are all the shows your father did. You know what Max is gonna do? You know what my family's gonna do? They're gonna cry. Yeah. And then they're gonna go back to the house. Mm-hmm. They're going to have some food, and then they're going to start talking about bullshit, well, like, and then they're going to move on. Yeah, and then they're going to go, how much money do we get? Yeah, <laughs> that how, much? How many not... life insurance policies did he have? We didn't oh, get any. Uh, nothing? <laughs> nothing, really? That's the, and, that's, and that's because I understand that because I have that. I know that the, the most important thing is to make sure my kids and you know people I love get taken care of in a way. Right. Like I don't want to have them to have to pay for the funeral. So like yeah. I have a couple like I have a decent amount of life insurance right. so that they'll they'll have something. Yeah. And I think they'll appreciate that way more than some fucking uh laminates. A hundred percent, dude. <laughs> if, My, if, the, the when sh- they get sixty thousand dollars and be like, you know what, I really did love this guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. I, I don't I gotta get life insurance, dude. I don't you know. You don't have life insurance? I don't have life insurance. You, do it today. And you're also set up in a place where hey, you can use her. you can use life insurance yeah. as a way of what making money. How? Because you because it's it's a commodity. So if you put a decent amount in, it earns interest, and then you can borrow against that interest. I mean, uh, you know who I learned that from? Who? Fucking uh, Flow Rider or some some rapper was talking about it, <laughs> and I was like, "Is that right?" And then uh, yeah, it was fucking right. Don, you you're live on the radio. With me and Bill Squire. You're live on YKWD. Dawn. Okay. Do I have... Yeah, do I, I to do. Okay, thank you for telling me that. Do we have... Hi, hi Max. Uh, do, do I have life insurance? Um, no. Dawn, can you get that today? <laughs> Please. For what, yourself? what do we get, term? Uh, yeah, term is... So I don't know the ins and outs of it. What but do you term, have? I think I have term. Okay. And it's like 20 years. Yeah. And uh, then you just have to renew it every, like, when it's up. Yeah. That way it doesn't lapse. But then there's another kind that you get, and that's the kind that you can borrow against and actually All it right. becomes a commodity. All right. Get the one you can borrow money against, okay? Yeah, okay. All right. The final conversation for your YKWD. <laughs> Sorry. I just Wait, want, we're just talking no, about what you, you, want, you want laminates and posters and shirts, or you want money? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. There you go. Get on it. I love you guys. How'd you do in jujitsu today? Uh, he's got a zipper over his lips. I don't know, like Beetlejuice. All right. Go goodbye. Ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. Awesome. I'll see you guys later. I love you. I'm going to look talking about. I can't believe I don't have any life insurance. Yeah, it's it's a. I'm 52. I was walk a flock of flame talking about life insurance. <laughs> I walk a flock. And it like I, it's just one of those things that showed up in my TikTok. Yeah. And I was like, well, that sounds real smart, and uh, I'm going to check into it. And it is a thing. So I don't even have that kind yet, but I'm going to get that kind. Like, right. I, is I, it I, expensive to get life insurance? Uh, not really. Like I my I have two policies that are. Pay out a hundred thousand dollars each, yeah. and it's like thirty dollars a month. That's it. Yeah, for each one. So I'm paying like seventy dollars a month. <laughs> Does your girl it. know about that? No, but she's not. She's not on the list yet. Oh, she's so she don't get it. Not yet. We've only been dating for a few months. Okay, all right. Yeah, I, this is a that. different girl from so, last time. A different one. Yeah. Oh yeah, shit. I've, I've 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 moved a lot, and I've had a lot of girlfriends. Are you in an? Aren't you in a nice apartment? High rise. Yeah, yeah. I got a nice uh, condo with a lake view and everything. Do you own it or you I rent? Own it. You yeah. look at you, yeah. dude. I am doing all right here. You remember me and you yeah. used to hang out? Yeah. Your little tie. You would mm-hmm. wear a tie I with a, a white tie. shirt, yep. like a Mormon. Yep. And and, and, and you were just a fuck up. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I still just, am. You still a fuck. I'm mean, still a fuck up, but I I just have uh, I figured out a few things. Yeah. And you know I've. One thing that threw me into like growing up fast was I got married to a woman that had three kids that I raised. Right. And so that that made me grow up a lot and, and kind of pick and choose what I, I valued. And just time and relationships were like the main thing. Like be around people you want to be around yeah. and spend your time doing what you want to do. Well, people don't understand, and I figured this out. I actually became a man when I had my son. Yeah. I, I became, I always thought I was this man. Mm-hmm. I wasn't. Until I had Max, I that's when I became a man. 
I had responsibilities that you couldn't run from. Mm -hmm. I had things I had to do that I couldn't hide from. Right. Uh, I had to be a dad. I never, I never had one. So I, I had these responsibilities. It just, I had to be a better husband. I had to be a better person. Right. Because I now I'm raising something, someone mm. who is gonna, they're gonna do, they're gonna take what I teach them. Yeah. You know. And that's kind of the same thing for me. Like I didn't. Uh, like I, I went into these kids' life and I like went head first. And so when once I was living with their mom and stuff, and like I had moved to New York and then I moved back because I wanted to be part of that family. Yeah. And so I was like, if I'm gonna be here, I'm gonna do it all in. Even if they were still a little bit like cause because people had their guards up when people are coming into their life, especially children. Sure. So they never I mean, they eventually got to a point where they were like, Oh, he's our dad, we can rely on him for anything. But it was me constantly trying to have to prove that. And so, you know, I'm going out doing these gigs on the weekend. It's not like I was, you know, you're, you're making feature money. You're doing pretty good on merch some weekend. So you come home with a wad of cash sometimes. You're like, oh, I'm doing good. And you're like, all right, what am I doing with this? Making sure my kids can have school clothes, doing doing those things, <laughs> provide, making sure rent's paid, all those things that make you be selfless and focus. And you don't even care. You're, you're proud of it. You're that, happy. Yeah, that's the key, yeah. man. The key, people don't understand that being selfless, yeah. like helping other people, doing things for others, right? Right. Is one of the greatest drugs you'll ever take. Absolutely. And, and people don't get it. Like, they, they think they have to become famous or, mm -hmm. or, or go party or get laid. All you have to do to feel holy shit inside is be selfless. Do something for somebody else. Right. And help somebody and, else. And do it with disregard for yourself and just do it for them just to for them not like, for you yeah. not for the accolades right. not for the the all the bullshit just to help somebody else out i mean dude i had a guy last night uh he said he hit me on instagram hey yeah. i got something for you i'd like to meet you. in my brain i'm like maybe you got a cigar or whatever and i'm like sure I'll, I'll meet anybody that wants to meet me right. anybody that wants to meet me i will meet you you know i don't like to hang out and do i don't like to hang out after a show right because there's people that don't Right. And that just sucks. And that feels real bad. That feels it's, so bad. It sucks. The, the worst is when, <laughs> when you're, uh, the you know, with a group of people. And you know this doing tours with, like, yeah, Rich and, yeah. and, and uh, Ryan. I know exactly like what you're going to say. <laughs> and they're, they're, everyone's so excited to meet one of the guys. Yep. And then they get to you, and they're just like, and then they just pass right over you. Yeah, oh, that no. Is, that is a feeling that, uh, ooh, that that makes a core memory. And it's usually women love doing this. Not that, you know, I'm, I'm not being uh, sexist, but, it, you know, men like to do so. Yeah. Women will love to go, you know, see me and then, like, see, mm -mm. oh, you are so funny. Yeah. And let you, like, they want to look at you, get your yeah. attention, and then go over there. And, you were great. Yeah. Oh, my. And it's like. Those real uh, housewife compliments where they know ye, that they're doing. Oh. Yeah. The, the passive aggressive shit. So man. I'd rather avoid that. Yeah. But if somebody's like, dude, of course I'll come meet you. Mm -hmm. He showed up last night. He's a, a, a craftsman, a wood guy. And he, I guess you heard me on Rogan talking about how I love, I love people who make stuff mm -hmm. from scratch. I love knife makers. I love jewelry makers. I love wood, uh, you know, carpenters and wood uh, make. I love, um, you know, I mean, anybody who takes something from nothing and just makes it, yeah. and then all of a sudden you have this beautiful piece of something. I love it. It's great when they do a good job. Yes, well, good <laughs> piece. Listen, yes. I'm not talking about <laughs> you, know, you know you've had people give you a picture of you and like, oh, I painted this. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I still, I, I still have those. I kept those ones. Oh, that's I great. I have those. This dude, I made this for you. It's like, ah, shit. You sure did, didn't you? <laughs> Bro, Ramon uh, got it. You know, Ramon Rivas is a comic in Cleveland too, and he got into painting, and he was he painted a picture for another comic when her dad died. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, "What am I gonna do with this?" I'm like, "You're gonna fucking frame it and put it on your wall because your that, because that's your friend and that's your dad, <laughs> and it's not great, but he made it with love, so yeah. you have to enjoy it." You're gonna frame it. You're gonna put it right by his casket yeah. at the funeral, yeah. <laughs> right by his head. Dude, I saw this video yesterday. No, I'm just gonna sidetrack for a second because I like this conversation, but I was watching this video today, and I, I I'm pretty sure it was real. A guy broke into a funeral doing uh, Facebook Live or something. He's like, uh -huh. yeah, this motherfucker ain't shit. <laughs> and he walks, I'll slap this bitch right now. And he just goes, crack. 
and slaps the fucking corpse and then everybody attacks him. I, I'm pretty sure it was real though. If it was a skit, it was perfectly it, done. Yeah. Because it was too much. It was, it was believable. There was no yeah. shitty acting yeah. in it. It was real emotions. <laughs> And there's no way you got unknown actors to act that great. Right. It was so funny. Oh. He slapped the corpse. It was probably, and there's a big percentage it was yeah. probably fake. Yeah. But I was dying laughing because no one's ever, no one's ever, <laughs> I've never seen a, not yet a Facebook Live from a funeral. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm expecting it to come. Right. With someone's, yo, yo, I'm at, uh, I'm at Kurt's funeral, man. Yeah. Look at that motherfucker's out. He's out. He's not even <laughs> he, in there anymore. He looks good yeah. though, right? Yeah. Like right at the, take your last. <laughs> Yo, what's up, man? Grab his hands. <laughs> so I don't think that that's got to be out there. When you've gone to funerals, have you ever touched the body in the casket? Uh, no, but I, a friend of mine uh, bit the nose once. Really? Yeah, a friend of mine was in the, uh, you know, Italian guy from the mm. north end of Boston. Let's just say that. Yeah. And uh, th this guy owed him money, a lot of money, and oh. he died. He went to the thing, he went up to the casket, he said his thing, and then he leaned over and bit his fucking nose. He went, you cocksucker, <laughs> you owe me money. <sighs> and he, you could see teeth marks in the guy's nose. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I my, my cousin passed away when he was uh, 17, and at his funeral, I was just, you know, trying to deal with it the way I could, and I was 14 at the time. Yeah. So I was just like, well... I know how Ryan was, and he'd want me to touch his dead body. <laughs> and so I reached in and held his hand. You did? Yeah. And it was stiff? Yeah, it felt terrible. It was, it's, yeah, it was, it's not yeah, even I a still, human being. I still have dreams about it. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it's but I, but I the relationship that we had, like, he was my cool older cousin. And so he always, like, I'd always try and do things to impress him. And yeah. so, like, that would be a thing that I've, like, I would be able to tell him. And so then I told his older brother a few years later, and oh. he's like, he absolutely would have loved that. Oh, you got yeah. a, you got mannequin hand feeling in yeah. your brain of, what, Ryan who? Uh, his name's Ryan Cook. Oh, okay. Yeah, was he, he a was, comedian? No, no, he was, uh, I mean, we were in high school at the time. Right. So okay. he was uh, my cousin, and uh, he was like a state champion wrestler, though. No shit. And then he, he was driving home on a, we were, lived in the country, and he had a four wheeler, and he was driving home from his girlfriend's house at oh. night on a four wheeler, and he wasn't wearing a helmet, and the road was a harder bend than he remembered. So he's driving it at night, yeah. And uh, he just went to the bush, his head, and died. Real sad. That sucks, man. Yeah. Wow, what a bummer. Yeah. You got any more sad shit for this? Oh, podcast? so much, man. I got. <laughs> this is why I don't keep anything because I don't want to be reminded of the past. <laughs> There's so much sad shit. That's a. Uh, but that's. I mean, that's kind of how we bonded. Was that first weekend uh, when you worked at your headline, the Cleveland Improv, when yeah. it was still in the old location? And it was like you came in and you just, you know, I was such a big fan of all you guys from, from Opie and Anthony, you and, and Jim and uh, yeah. Patrice and everything. And we did some shows and you're like, I was hosting and you're like, oh, you're pretty funny. And you're, you know, we, we were kind of talking. Then we talked about spending some Christmases on the road. Yeah. And just being sad on the road on Christmas, and then yeah. that's when, the, and then eating our feelings, and then we're like, oh, we're friends. Yeah, yeah, we bonded. Yeah, we and do eat our feelings. We do. You know what I'm gonna do? So we we're talking. How many fats have you had? This is probably my fourth. Your fourth fat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, this is my fourth, and you know, I think I'm, I'm gonna try. You've talked a lot about the surgery. Yeah. And I'm, I'm gonna get a consultation, but yeah. I think what I'm gonna do, to uh, get in the headspace yeah. is start treating it like I already have it yeah. and just think about like, okay, I can eat this much and then I'm going to get sick and just tell myself I'm going to get sick if I eat too much. You're going to fake a surgery yeah. in your head. Yeah. Do you try understand? And, try and hypnotize myself. I know it's not going to work. Okay. But no, first of all, <laughs> you know, I, you know what I did first to get the surgery? You had to lose weight, right? No. Okay. I had to get my spirit right. Okay. I had to get my head right. Three years ago, I, I went and got my shit together mentally and spiritually. Mm -hmm. um, whatever that is for you, I don't know what that is for you. Well, I mean, I don't know if I have that spirituality. I've, 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 I think that's a part of my life that I tap into from time to time, but I don't know if I have, like, an in-depth realization what it is for me. Like, yeah. like I like doing things for people. Yep. I have a lot of empathy for people, but I don't think of – spirituality that spirituality often. is a positive perspective on life okay that's what god is yeah to me you know people talk about god mm -hmm. it's a positive perspective it's right and wrong yeah 
right? Yeah. It's being grateful. It's being generous. It's, uh, you know, um, you know, being kind, loving, mm -hmm. you know, uh, making connections with the people around me. Not everybody, but my family. Right. You know, um, my wife, my kid, uh, living in the moment. Mm -hmm. That's all spirituality. Taking time to just sit without, you know, waking up in the morning. This morning I woke up and I got on my phone, which is not what I don't like to do. I, wake, I like to wake up in the morning and be grateful. I like to sit there and think about stuff that I'm, I'm grateful for. Yeah. And until I smile. Yeah. Until it makes me happy. Until I think of something, I'm like, oh, man, I'm, yeah. thank you. Right. That's how I like. Today I got on the on the thing. I got, I, I just, because I had my flight thing popped up, that's what woke me up, so I clicked on that. Mm -hmm. And then I clicked on Instagram, and it went to stories, and it was all about God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was all about being grateful. Yeah. It was all about how to, you know, what life really, it was all these people. These affirmations and things it was all like that. that. It was yeah. all positive yeah. shit. And I was like, I didn't, I didn't do that thing this morning. I started laughing. Yeah. I'm like, God damn. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whatever. The that's how good they are with technology now. They're like, oh, he forgot to do his affirmations. We'll do it for him. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. That's, I'm pretty sure that's. Bezos that. is like, ah, oh, well, well, you get this one, Bobby, but you yeah. gotta, you gotta remember to be grateful and then get on the internet. <laughs> but I think, I think, you know, I, I usually try to get up and I'll have a, a wake app. I'll try to do something. Mm -hmm. I gotta do something because when I, I feel like when I am driving the car, when I'm the one. Mm -hmm. making all the decisions when I'm holding on too tight. Like yesterday, my flight gets delayed. It gets delayed again. It gets delayed again and then again. And then it gets canceled. That's where I would be screaming at an airport. God hates me. Yeah. People suck. Fuck life. Right. And then when you say that shit, it, 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 it's, it's little things that stay with you. Mm -hmm. Over time, you hold on to that shit. I just, but because three years ago, I kind of went and started finding avenues to take care of this instead of going to other people and, you know, having them fix me or, you know, uh, instead of being jealous and envious and justified anger and justified resentment and all this shit that feels great and, and, and makes you feel good and, and fuels the fire. Fuck them and fuck the world. And I'm the motherfucker. Right. Right. I let go of all of it. Uh, like I try to every day, just let go. So yesterday at the airport, I was like, all right, well, I have no control over this, so I'll keep trying to get there is what I if you I talked to the club and they were like, please try. So I was like, I told my wife, I go, I'll keep trying. And if we can find something, we'll get there. If not, I don't know what to do. I mean, it's not it's out of my I, I let go of it. Not one ounce of anger. Came into the show last night, a little anxiety just because I haven't slept. You know, yeah. and it, I, I used to be all fucked up and be like, you know, who's these people? What the fuck's going on? Who's this? It's just like, hey, man, the show's happening. I'm yeah. here. I'm going on stage. Let's go have fun. Hey, guess what? It's creeping up. That's right. St. Nick is coming. But imagine getting everyone on your list the perfect gift while it's still November. Shop Tommy John's Cyber Monday sale right now and spread the joy of cozy. In Tommy John, you're that much more comfortable. So when you can do everything better. Shop Tommy John's Cyber Monday sale and give the gift of comfort to everyone on your list, including yourself. All right. With over 18 million pairs sold, giving Tommy John's has become a holiday tradition. 90% of women and men love getting a gift from Tommy John. That's why Tommy John's doesn't have customers. They have fanatics. I love Tommy John's. I love wearing them. It's comfortable. Let me tell you something. I don't like underwear. I used to never wear underwear, but now I Wear them all the time because they're comfortable. They make you feel good. I can walk around the city. I can travel and I feel great. And I sleep in them. It's so comfortable. Celebrate softness this season with the gift of new Tommy John underwear, loungewear, and pajamas. Every gift's backed by Tommy John's best pair you'll ever wear or it's free guarantee. What? You know what, dude? It's free if you don't like it. Shop Tommy John's Cyber Monday sale now. Get 30 3% off everything plus free shipping at tommyjohn.com slash YKWD. It's one of Tommy John's biggest sales of the year. 33% off everything plus free shipping at tommyjohn.com slash YKWD. See sites for detail. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. 
Hey, man, listen, life doesn't come with a user's manual. So when it's not working for you, it's normal to feel stuck. Navigating any of life's challenges can suck. All right. You feel unsure. You don't know what to do. You can't make a decision. Well, career changes, new relationships, being a parent, being a boyfriend, a husband, uh, a, a mother, a, a girlfriend. It can be overwhelming. Check this out. Therapists, it's the they're the only ones you can go to sometimes. It's a neutral place where you can say whatever you want, talk about whatever you want, and it won't affect your life. I can't go to my wife with everything. I can't go to my friends with everything, but I can go to a therapist and release all the guilt, release all the confusion, and have somebody help me and guide me so I can live a more productive, peaceful life. So let me tell you something. I go to therapy all the time. I, I love it. It's a place where I can really let go of all the dark clouds that I carry around all the time so I can let sunshine through and be happy as the world's largest therapy service. Better help has matched 3 million people with professional licensed and vetted therapists available a hundred percent online. Plus it's affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. If things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime it couldn't be simpler. No waiting room, no traffic, no finding a spot, no endless searching for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash dude. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash dude. What made you go in that direction? Because I lost everything. You lost everything. I lost it all, dude. I, I Comedy and making it and being famous... And, you know, having millions of dollars and being Chappelle or, you know, any of these guys, mm -hmm. Louis or Rogan, all like being, I had to, be, you have to be that or you failed. Right. You have to be, you have to have all those things mm -hmm. or you're not successful. You have to do all this stuff or you're not in. And I, and uh, when it was all taken away from me, the opportunity to get that was taken away. Yeah. I was like, what, what, what do I get left? Oh, I got my wife. I got my family. I got my, I got a house. Mm -hmm. I got uh, people that love me. I got friends. I have a talent. I can talk for a living. Yeah, I'm creative. I can make shit happen. You get to make other people happy. You get to, and and I know exactly what you're talking about that because as a guy that chose to stay in a smaller market and kind of choosing peace of mind over certain pursuits. There are a lot of people that look like I gave up or didn't try or whatever it was, yeah. but I just wanted a different path because, one, I love doing talk radio. Right. And I love doing stand-up comedy, right. and I get to do both almost every day and make a decent living doing it. And it's not this thing where I'm going to get the accolades, I'm not going to get the TV shows or yeah. things like that, but I get to just keep going with that yeah. and then also still have, you know, the other things that balance that makes life because I mean, we both know the people that go so hard and we were probably yeah. the ones that nothing mattered, but getting on stage yeah. and, and you sacrifice all these things and it completely wrecks all your perspective on what's really important right. in life yeah. because we just wanted to be good at stand up comedy yeah. and we wanted respect and we wanted people to know our names. And then yeah. uh, it, it, this darkness builds in you and and letting go of that is uh is really important. I've had more stuff happen for me since I started letting go. Mm -hmm. Right? And and enjoying my life now instead of waiting to get certain things to right. enjoy it. I've had more success and more stuff happen in a long time. Yeah. You know, um it, it was it's weird. I mean, look at you. Yeah. Look at where we are. Yeah. Right? Look what we're doing. You know, it's like you went down your path. Mm -hmm. You didn't fight your path. You were trying to do other people's path. Go to New York, yeah. hang out here, do stupid shit, yeah. get blah, 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 go to the end of the cellar, get in, and then you'd be, where would you be right now? You'd probably be on the road somewhere, right. busting your ass. Still whatever. have roommates, still, th like, all that stuff. Dude, you, you went down your path that was not, it wasn't the fucking, the one people would tell you to choose. Go back to Cleveland. Right. The fucking, what is it, the shit on the lake? What do they <laughs> the call steak it? steak on the lake. <laughs>
and you did it, but you and you and success was waiting for you. Yeah, you went. You you got the family. Mm -hmm. You got your your, your kids. You got uh, an apartment. You got a job. Mm -hmm. You're a respected comic. All of it happened. It just didn't happen right then. Right. Right. And, and that's kind of, and, and it took a long right. time to realize those things were happening. Right. Because they are, the, you know, they're happening, but you don't, you're looking forward instead of being in the moment. Yeah. And that's a really hard thing to uh, do for a lot of people in any career because yeah. you're, you're so focused on trying to do more that you don't appreciate what you have. And I think that's why it's so good that you have recognized like, oh, I need to wake up and be grateful. And then, and then my day is going to be a lot different. Yeah, dude, this morning, and it sounds corny, but that type of stuff, look at me, you got a, you got a finite amount of time on this planet, and mm -hmm. it goes quick. When you're young, it seems like it takes forever. Mm -hmm. When you hit your 40s, it goes fast. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you got to, you got to, you know, I have that joke in my act, you got 30 summers left. And that's a, that's a true statement. And, and if you aren't, if you aren't, uh, living at peak performance, if you're not enjoying that shit yeah. and giving yourself any shot. Like I said last night, man, I, I got I got the operation. I was mentally ready to do it. I'm like mentally ready to not be a fat fuck anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm Because I was like, you know, I didn't have a dad around all the time. I had these in and out father figures. Yeah. Right? And I didn't know my real dad. We knew each other here and there, which sucks, mm -hmm. right? My son was going to go through the same fate because I like noodles. Right. Because I like to eat pizza. Yeah. It's like, wow. Like, how did your dad die? I mean, even your friend died a cool way. Right. You know, ATV leaving his chick's house. <laughs> yeah. You know? I, I Because, you know, I like candy bars and ice cream. My dad's gone, and I have no direction in life. Right. And also, we've lost people that couldn't get that under control. Yeah. You know, you, we've, we've lost a lot of people... Because they couldn't, uh, you know, figure it out. Yeah, look, I accept fat people, dude, yeah. and people that you know. I but this Lizzo shit. Yeah, it's like, listen, man, we can't glorify people fucking murdering themselves with food. Oh, I agree. We, 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 you don't body shame. Look, man, yeah, don't. I don't like when people call people fat fucks. Mm -hmm. Like I know people, you know, that big fat fuck, or that you know that fat right. person. I I hate that. You know, I don't like that shit. Um, but you, you do also understand the real like. The reality is, it's not healthy to carry that much weight. Right, you can't. can't. You can't like as as much confidence as Lizzo has, and is you know, she's fun about it, but she's Lizzo. There's a bunch of girls that aren't Lizzo that are like yeah, losing feet. Yeah, <laughs> right, right, and it, and it's not, and the, you know, I I have uh, aunts and uncles that are big and they're real big and like they're. Almost immobile, where like just going up the steps every day is like the thing. Like, yeah, that's you the can't. Thing. You can't. Yeah. I don't believe that we should be glorified. And I'm not saying that because I lost weight yeah. now. I always felt that way. You know, it's like you can't. We can't. Like, dude, if you're fat, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Nah, man. You know, it's not okay. You should get help. Right. It's okay. Look at. Don't. I'm not gonna make fun of you. Look at that fat motherfucker. You right. know, I hate that shit. But and you should love yourself yeah. at every stage of the game. Well, My therapist told me that the last time two years ago. I gotta lose weight. I gotta eat. He goes, "Why don't you just be fat?" I went, "What?" He goes, "Just eat what you want. Be fat. Get as big as you want. But love yourself. Mm -hmm. Just love yourself who you are." And that bothered me. Yeah, I was like, "You motherfucker! You're telling me to give up on myself. You're telling me to fucking just quit. You you're telling me to love myself as is." And he's like, no, I'm just telling you that you should love yourself no matter what. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, great. That's fine. But I don't love myself like this. He goes, then do something about it. There you go. And I was like, okay, I got it. You you can't, if you love yourself being fat and you're fine with that and you're fine getting sick mm -hmm. and later in life having problems, okay, fine. Be you. Do your thing. Eat what you want. Right. But if you find yourself looking in the mirror being sad and you hate yourself and you're eating to f as a drug yeah and you want to be something else then you got to you got to take care of your spirituality you got to take care of your spirit space yeah yeah and and i i get that thing where you kind of have to accept it but then you can also work on it yeah so you go okay like i i love me but i don't love these parts of me yeah. so what can i do to work on that shit yeah. and so when you do you, you do it slow you do it you know in yeah. in, a, in a way that 
makes you happy. Like I've been going to the working out with a trainer for a year and a half and my body has, I haven't like lost a lot of weight, but my body has changed from being like a lot fatter right. to a little bit more, you know, there's right. more muscle underneath strength, and stuff yeah. like that. And so that's been like a good step to just be able to do that for a year and a half consistently. Right. Yeah. And now that I know that I'm going to do that, I got to start focusing on the diet because that's the, that's the part where I go, all right, I'll do this. And then you do it for two weeks and you're like, all right, I deserve a little cheat day. And then you have the cheat day and you fall right off. And I, that's that's the thing that I struggle with the most. Yeah, man. It's the food is – it's your friend, dude. Yeah. Food your friend, and you got to realize that food is not your friend. Yeah. Food is your enemy. Yeah. Yeah, you don't need to – this thing that you need to have a good meal or eat at a good restaurant or is poor shit. Mm -hmm. This is what the commercials did to you. This is what all the ads did to us. This is what uh, movies and everything and these TV shows and the Food Network. We have a chant. We have multiple channels where people go fi go eat other people's disgusting food as yeah. a gimmick. Yeah, I ate it. You know, mm -hmm. and they have, we have a, uh, shows that man versus food, competitive eating. Yeah, and there's still places that can't. The kids aren't eating. That's how fucked up our country is. Right. That's how fat we are. Yeah. We have channels dedicated to just being a fat fuck. Right. And they have these people on it, too, that don't have food addictions. Yeah. So they have no guilt in it. Right. Like, I can't do a food show. We die. We die. We die so fast. But I, I, I'm yeah. also peddling fucking drugs. Yeah. You know? That's like, like having a show, like... All right, we're in this town. We're gonna smoke some crack. Yeah, they got good crack. It's uh, you know, not very stepped on. Yeah, this, like, that's, this blue that's, dragon, man. Yeah, we're gonna get. We're going into Harlem to get the original blue dragon. Yeah. from from uh, fucking the movie American <laughs> Gangster. This is the original. It's 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 crazy the what we do, and it's mm -hmm. you can't you can't be the only way to beat it is to uh, it's just like drugs. You got to be you got to acknowledge it. Yeah, you got to accept it, recognize it. You know. And and food, like, the, dude, this morning I woke up and I went down to the fucking coffee shop and I lost weight. I'm mm. good. I can have whatever I want now. And I look and it's all muffins. It's all fucking biscuits. It's all scones. Yeah. I could have one of those. I'm, I'm, You know what I mean? I'll just, I was like, nah, you can't. You just get the stupid oatmeal with nothing. Yeah. I can have oatmeal. I just got oatmeal. And it was fine. It was fine, dude. And then you feel, you know, you got the nourishment and all that stuff and yeah. so yeah like it's it's it is that that programming that we got from the commercial that we didn't even realize was happening yeah and that uh that indulgence that we used to be like ah i'm eating food and and you know we we tell we we wouldn't eat because it tasted good we yeah. el we ate because it filled something up in us and it was just it's it's so hard to what's break the that. Gr what's the grossest thing you've ever done food wise oh man mm. So, you know, the McDonald's, they do, like, the, they do these boxes. Yeah. And they'll just give, like, it's, like, two cheeseburgers, two what, Big Macs. Adult Happy Meal? No, no. This is, like, a family What's a, meal. They give family meals at McDonald's? So, they'll do, yeah, they'll, they do these family meals, and they're, like, 12 or $15. It's, it's stupid cheap. Right. But they're so, there's, like, two Big Macs, two cheeseburgers, <sighs> four French fries, a 10-piece nugget. Oof. And I have bought those yeah. and eaten it all yeah. by myself. Yeah. And that's. that's I want to go there now. I know. Right? <laughs> that sounds great. And, I, know, you know, I wouldn't have got the surgery if I knew McDonald's had that. <laughs> <laughs> and so, like, though, and it'll be like some gimmick where it's like around here, it'll be like the Cavs family meal deal. So, you know, you get the yeah. thing and then you watch the Cavs game as a family. And I'm buying this as a single person. And I'm like, I'm not gonna eat all this. I just want to. It's it's a good value. So yeah. you're like lying to yourself about, and then you, you're not even just eating it the way it is. I'm taking it home and I'm adding Thousand <laughs> Island to my regular cheeseburgers <laughs> to make it more like a Big Mac, uh -huh. and uh, just just going to town on it. Yeah. And like it's it's disgusting. But it, it's disgusting. But, but God it damn it, it yeah. it's better than sex. <laughs> I mean, man, I would put food up against sex any day. I think we have. <laughs> I've done that a couple of times, man. I, I mean, it's it's funny now because my my sex drive is back. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, so like I'm 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 
masturbating is so much more now. Like as soon as I go on the road, yeah, I don't masturbate at home. Yeah, because I have a small house and I don't want to get caught. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I just don't want to explain that. You know, yeah. what are you doing? And my yeah, <laughs> dad, what are you? Ah, oh, god damn it! I don't want my. You know what I mean? And yeah, my no, porn, I totally get it. my porn preferences are just off the charts. I mean, just off the charts. So. I've also gone like deep into porn, yeah. and you know, you know how I bring myself back because sometimes you're getting into a place and you're like, "What am I doing? Am yeah. I really?" I was even... there this morning before yeah. I got here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I read porn. I'm sorry. Yeah. What? I read it. Wow. Well, like, what? there's a website called Literotica.com, and so then it's like you're romanticizing yourself. Can you please yourself. pull that up? Yeah. L- what is it? Literotica.com. Okay, so you go to this site. And do you have to choose a genre? Is yeah, that- like there's all these stories, and then you just like, Dude, this is the nerdiest shit I've ever heard yeah, in my life. Yeah, it is. And you just like pick one, and you go. Can all you right. read it? Uh, I guess so. We'll, we'll go with erotic couplings. Okay. I don't know what this is. Uh, <laughs> this is uh the Photoshop Challenge Forty Five, but they're long. That's the thing. It's like. Just can you? So it's like a regular porn. You just gotta skip to the good part. No, no, like that. That's kind of the thing that makes it exciting. Is like, I like getting pulled into the story. Can I see it. Yeah. Let me see this for a second. You like the story. I like the story. I like the buildup <laughs> because I'm so jaded by pornography that I, I like to go back to like the excitement of like wondering if you're gonna get laid. I mean, dude, this is, I mean, I'm scrolling and scrolling. There's no sex yet. Yeah. Oh, my God. But it, I'm so happy that you brought me here, Lou. <laughs> L-E-W. W, yeah. It has been on my to-do list for many years, and I never found the time nor the opportunity to actually do it. Well, you took me on a cruise, something I've been dreaming of doing. Where's the sex? It gets in, but that's the thing. It takes a while to get there. Yeah, this movie had desire. All right. With more hands on top of her panties, I slid down to the floor, go. taking them with me and uncovering the most interesting part of her luscious body, her enticing playground. It was still nicely devoid of pubic hair and already slightly moist. Ugh. A clear indication I was making all the right moves on her. Nice. I could hear it silently sending out a mating call. <laughs> you could hear a pussy? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's sonar. But before I perform the traditional in and out dance, <laughs> this isn't what I've read before. I, first, I just picked a random one. I don't know if this one would be it. Traditional in and out dance. I first wanted to do an oral assessment of her female juices. Ugh. I blew on her little wall. Wonderland to get them flowing a bit more which sent shivers through her body. She grabbed my head and pulled it in it into the direction of that magical place. What is this for kids? <laughs> where her legs meet. Where her legs meet. Again, I took it slow <laughs> with a quick kiss on her slick womanhood. I could feel that was not entirely to her liking as she pulled a bit harder, making my nose touch her little pleasure point i don't want to keep her in suspense any longer i gave a good strong lick with the flat of my tongue from the bottom of her snatch there you go all the way to the top and back down again i was rewarded with more of her tasty juices and some growling and grumbling deep in her throat wow Uh, now you should read those (laughs) <laughs> Dude, first of all, there's no such thing as a tasty pussy juice. Yeah, it's a lie that we tell. I don't know. It's we a, tell that lie. It's for women. Yeah. Yeah. Women make us fucking lie yeah. about how their pussy stinks. We make. No, they, they, make, it's them. No, it's but, them. But we lie about how much they want to. They lie to us about how much they want us to come. <laughs> like, they, they don't. Good point. They don't want. They don't care. They don't. Yeah. They, they, they and when don't they, want they you say to, wherever you want, yeah. they really don't want you to do it yeah. anywhere near them. Yeah, they mean the toilet. Yeah, <laughs> a napkin. Get yeah. that away from yeah. me. Yeah, they don't want to. No, they don't want right. to have to wash it off their face or their tits or get it in their hair or oh. anything like that. They just want it. Out, they just want it out of your body so that they can go do something else. Yeah, yeah. yeah they want out. We're yeah. done. Yeah. The last thing they want you to do is come. Right. They want you to come because it's over. Right. As soon as you come, it's done. Although, have you been with a girl and then you, you're like, I'm not coming tonight, but they're 
they keep trying. Oh, they think they, their pussy's a magic. Y- yeah. Well, oh, no, yeah. They, they're like, I'll, I'll make you come. Like, no, yeah. I've jerked they think off four times today. I'm not coming. They think their pussy has yeah. magical powers yeah. because it's their pussy. Yeah. And it doesn't. No. It's the same pussy as the other pussies. Right. There is, I would give, there are pussies you're made to be with. Yeah, I agree with that. I, there, I've had sex with girls where you're like, oh, I, I want nothing to do with you emotionally. I can spot them. What? I can spot the, <laughs> like, if a girl. You have so, to see them or through pants? No, I can spot, like, when I. Because some girls' <laughs> stuff starts higher than others. Oh, what do you mean? The like vagina? The, the vagina part. Yeah. The yeah. Vagina, the <laughs> why vagina would, part. why are you yeah. talking like them? <laughs> right. They're, so their vagina starts higher or lower. And if they have, it's almost like a recessed vagina where it doesn't even start until like it's all the way down there. Down in the asshole, like near the asshole? Like way, like way further yeah. back in the legs. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm like, that one, we're not going to work. I know that just because. If I'm gonna eat your pussy, I have to like hold you up yeah. almost just to get to it. Right. And I, I and I my neck doesn't move like that. Right. I'm not so I've been with those girls that have and, it, and it's almost like there's like a ridge and then the like it'll be let me see. Like this is where it should be. Yeah. But it starts all the way down here. Okay, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, those aren't mine. Those aren't those aren't the ones for me. You like a you like an upfront pussy. I like it up front. I like it higher. You don't like a backseat pussy. Yeah. You like you like a VIP pussy. Yes, exactly. You want the front row pussy. I want the front row pussy. I want the I want the easy, accessible <laughs> clit and things like that. Because right. like that's the one thing that I'm, like I know I'm proficient at. Yeah. It's like if I'm gonna make a girl come, it's gonna be from eating her pussy. It's right. like, I'm not gonna fuck her brains out. <laughs> right. I'm not gonna like my like if she gets that, that's yeah. great. But yeah. I know like what I can bring to the table is. Knowing how to eat pussy, right, and doing that's a it big well guy. Enough. That's a big guy. Yeah, yeah. But Patrice yeah. used to uh, uh, practice that. Yeah, he's like, I'll eat your pussy. Yeah, he, he told every girl, I-, I can eat your pussy. Yeah, I'm not gonna fuck. I got a mediocre dick yeah. and I'm big. Yeah, he-, he ain't gonna perform well. Right, but I will. The I can bring the passion. Right, I can bring. I'll stick my fingers in your mouth. I'll eat your pussy. Yeah, I'll. I'll you can lick pay your attention. Butt. Like you can. You like it gets to a point where, you know. The pressure that they need, yep. how to tease it, yep. how to build it up, yeah. and that's, you know, and and they're like, oh, you're so good at this. I'm like, because I had to be, yeah, because I had to yeah. be, because I couldn't, because I can't, because if if we're fucking from behind and I have to put my belly on your ass, yeah, Let's that's do the that's rest- a, that ruins everything for everyone. I want to do the rest of the show like we're on FM radio. All right, no more, no more of that, yeah, no more of that. Let's see if we can do it. All right, yeah, like it when like a girl's. Um, to, just to go back to the original thing, yeah. The a girl's um, love juice, yeah. I don't even know if we were getting away with that one. <laughs> uh, if a girl is uh, excited, she's gonna, ha- you yeah. know, yeah. You 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 can tell there yes. there's a there's a flow, yeah. And if that flow is not there, but that it's the, gonna it's you're you're, you're gonna be able to. I, I just want to say that in general, it's hard, isn't it? Women don't taste good. Right. We say <laughs> it's tasty mm-hmm. and it's oh my god, but it's not. We're lying so you don't feel bad. It's what we have to do, and that, it's a lie that we're happy to tell because you can't say ugh. Right. You can't go god, like you just opened up sardines. <laughs> yeah. Like, whoa. You can never go what the. You know you have to take it. Yeah. You have to get down there and take it, and it's. And we're happy to do it. We're not. I'm not. I'm happy to do it. If it means that she's going to be turned on, I'm happy to do it. I just thank God that he invented passion. Yeah. Because without passion, oh, we yeah. wouldn't be able to get past it. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to put yourself in the mindset no. to just be like, all right, I'm going to lick a Band-Aid flavored thing. For- Duh. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what it tastes like. A, a, a Band-Aid off a kid's knee. It's terrible. Yeah. And we, if without passion, without passion, we're not getting there. Yeah. Without the... Mm, mm, yeah. You know, it's like you ain't getting there. It's like when you're eating food. When you're so hungry, you're going to eat the eat the crappy stuff first. Yeah. Save the cake for the end. Right. You know what I mean? Same thing. It's like you need that passion. You need to kiss in and touch in, and that's why foreplay is so important. Oh, it's and it's so. 
I, like the 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 thing I love about foreplay is the I mean it's the same reason I will read pornography, hot stuff like that when we just read <laughs> because I like that build up. Like it actually does stuff for me too because it increases that passion. So yeah. if if there's foreplay and I'm excited, uh, and I get down there and it's like a real scabby band aid. I'm not gonna care because I'm so no. I'm so hyped up. Yes, for it. but if you just get down there and it's, bleh, I you're will, like you're like no, nah, you know what? No, dude, I'll eat tripe if I'm hungry enough. Right, I ain't eating tripe if I'm full. Yeah, if I'm full, I ain't yeah. eating tripe. No, not if I'm all. starving, I'll throw right in my mouth with with goat poop right in it. Yep. Well, um, it's I mean. It's apocalypse stuff. Like if in the zombie apocalypse, we're eating dog food because we got to survive. We're eating dog. Yeah, we're eating dog. We're eating dog food. We're eating Everything. whatever we can yeah. because we're conditioned to do that. And that's what foreplay is. Foreplay is conditioning conditioning us to overlook the gross parts yes. to get to the good stuff. Exactly. And yeah. it's gross. Sex is a gross thing. It is. You're taking stuff that was made for something else. Well, we made it into a grosser thing because we're like... <laughs> Uh, we can't just be. Yeah. Put, we just put the parts together the way they're supposed to go. <laughs> it's one thing, but once you start uh, moving faces yeah. towards, yeah, you're not supposed to put things. Yeah. You're not supposed to put things in your mouth, right? You know what I mean? <laughs> Food is supposed to go in your mouth. Right. We use it for water. Breathing, yeah. Water. Yes, that's the thing. Yeah, you're not supposed to speaking. Put, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what you're. We use. We try to use every ounce of the body. Yeah. In, like, because we're addicts. Yeah. That that I'm telling you, man. The uh, the Garden of Eden, don't do this. Right. Well, and then <laughs> you look at the way the mouth the mouth is got the hardest, sharpest parts of our body in yes. it, and we're like, let's put that on your most sensitive part. It doesn't make sense. And we had yeah. to learn, we had to create techniques, yeah, to not injure that person. Right. To be like, All I right. mean, women. Do you understand? Like, people think that um, I can say oral sex. Yeah. Oral sex is not easy for women. There's a technique. Yeah. They can really hurt you. They can really hurt you. They could really right. hurt themselves. Yeah. They can, uh, and then they're just, they're, there's so much that can go wrong. There's so much that can go wrong with a woman doing that. Yeah. I mean, she has to be in the right temperament. I yeah. mean, woof. I'll, I mean, I give them a lot of credit for doing that. I mean, oral sex for us. And then, and not even just doing it, but also. A lot of them doing it with some enthusiasm and like li again lying passion. to us and letting that passion take over and yeah. being like, "I know you're gross. I see, <laughs> I see what you do. I know how your body works, and without you taking a full <laughs> shower or anything, I'm just gonna stick that in your mouth because They'll even go, even if it's clean, it's still like not. It's not. No. It's not. Especially on a big guy, it's yeah, not. It's no. been indoors. It's, been, it's 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 been in a sauna for the sweating. last couple it, hours. It crawls inside of us. Oh. Oh my, our, it Dude. it becomes. It, it's like one of those uh, stress balls. Yeah, like that's huh. that's what a fat guy's junk is like. It's you yeah. know it can be it can be impressive, but most of the time it is tucked away. Yeah, and that's the best part about losing weight is to have my penis back. That's awesome. It's like, I, I forgot I had a good piece. Yeah. I had a nice piece. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's got a little, you know, it was away. Mm -hmm. It was away on a ship for a while. Right. You but know, it's back. Ba battling seas. It's back. It got John genres for a little, you know. <laughs> didn't like have enough vitamins for a while. <laughs> Not enough sunlight, but it's back. It's castaway. It's cast. It's yeah, exactly. He's still. <laughs> yeah, like when he when he got first on the island, he was kind of chubby and everything yeah. like that. And then he gets off the island. Yeah, he's got a beard. Yeah, his beard and like yeah. there's this uh, sunken eye sockets. Yeah, this this. But like just uh, after two weeks, he started looking. You're like, oh, he looks pretty good. He's all. Good, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. He's got. We're yeah. gonna get him a suit. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, but I, I think worse. I think. It, I'll ask you this question. Wait, oh, I just tooted. Oh my god, that was wet. That was wet. Oh man, that's that was a, terrible. That's not great. <laughs> I still, I still went just because I'm not afraid. I'm well, not I smelled afraid. your fart. Yeah, once. Um, <laughs> I think, I think you did. I did. made you throw up. So bad. That was your so fart bad. Was terrible. Uh, if people want to know what that is, uh, the Opie and Anthony, what was it? That was a car crash comedy contest. Car crash comedy contest. Bill was in it. and He farted into the funnel fart. Yeah. And I had to smell it. So he yeah. farted into a face mask that went to a, a hose. Mm -hmm. That went to my face mask directly into my nose. It was crazy. And I almost threw up. Yeah. Terrible. Uh, that contest, I won that contest against a dude named Seton Smith. 
I remember, I know Seton Smith. And uh, he was just in town a few weeks ago opening for Mulaney. And he came on the show, and then we were hanging out at the arena, yeah. and like that was that was like a cool moment for both of us, where we just got to like, yeah, because that was a fun contest, and like we we've kept in touch a little bit since then, but it was cool to just sit backstage with him and kind of go over what's been happening with our careers, and yeah, uh, seeing him on that stage, those arena shows are something else. I, I mean, I've seen you at, on that same stage when you yeah. opened for Dane, yeah, and I I can't wrap my head around it i've been in big venues it's but a it's, money grab i understand it's and all it's it is in it but like it's not enjoyable for it's, the fans but it's how only, is it for a comic it's 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 not your it's not the it's best, not right? as enjoyable yeah. i mean yeah it's, you're a rock star right it's all ego yeah you walk out and you're bon jovi yeah you're the lead singer when you go what's up everyone? what's cleveland yeah. yeah what's happening thank you for having me all right Bam, bam, boom, bang. And you walk around because you got to let them laugh. Because, mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's, you know, and, and none of that was mine, by the way, too. It was all I, Dane's. Yeah. So it's not like I was going out there and people were going, you know, Wah. Yeah. You know, I had, I had to work harder. Right. Because they were like, get, I want Dane. Because they just wanted Dane. So I had yeah. to go out there and go, fuck you. Yeah. You want me too. You just don't know it. I'll let you know. Right. Which was not enjoyable no. as much for your ego. But it's all ego. Yeah. I, I really believe that. Those big arena gigs are to make money. Yeah. That's your agent saying, you know, that's a build. That's a here, 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 yeah. here. We're here. And now you maintain that as long as you can, but that will go away. Right. And Well, that's what I've, you know, seeing guys come through here. Seinfeld does the theater. Yep. Dave <sighs> does the theater. Yep. Uh, you know, Chris Rock does the theater. Yeah, they're, they're all doing the theater. Louis they, does the theater. They, they could all do that. Yep. But they're like, we like it here more. Well, because it, uh, comedy is made for, I would say, 300 people is prime. Yeah. The best. Yeah. 300 people in a club, 350 people who came to see you in a low ceiling comedy club yeah. There's nothing is, like is that. a kill box. That's yeah. why I named my special yeah. kill box is because of, it, there's nothing like that. And yeah. then 2,500 people to 5,000 people. I would say that 2,500 is probably the best theater. Mm -hmm. uh, but if once you go to probably 5,000 people. It's a little big. It's big. Like yeah. Eddie Murphy's Raw was 5,000 people. Yeah. Um, I think that's the limit where mm -hmm. it's like, because then people can't hear you. They can't see they you. They can't see you. And I think that's the most important part is being able to, to see, especially for people that use so much facial expression. Yeah. So, you know, there's these guys, you know, Sebastian, he's, he's very big and, he moves, but you're still missing out on his facial expressions. Yeah. And when you see those facial expressions, it adds so much. And you, you, if you're watching that in an arena, you're just watching it on TV. You're all watching a movie together, yeah. and that's what it feels like. And it's kind of a bummer when you really love stand-up comedy and you want to see, you know, you want to see them in the smaller venues. So that's always yeah. And if you want to play those venues, you know, I think that you know, you have to be cleaner. Yeah. You, I mean, listen. You have to be clean or have some other vehicle to get you to that success. Right. A TV show, uh, movies or something like that. Because, I mean, who's doing those? Sebastian. Sebastian. So the ones that Bert. have come through here, Bert, uh, Burr. And... Yeah, they're, they're edgy, yeah. but they're not, you know, the... you know they're, uh, Burr is edgy, but he's not dirty. Right. Bert's a little edgy, but not dirty at all. Yeah, he's, John Mulaney. He's... John Mulaney is crystal clean, yeah. right? Well, he swears a lot, Swear. but he's, he doesn't really talk about sex or anything. Yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. Just, so yeah. I think right. there's a, a certain thing you give up if you want to, you know, my style of comedy, I think I, I if I wanted to play in front of, uh, appeal to more people, yeah. I appeal to the people that like me. Right. But if you want to appeal to everybody, you ha I would have to, um, I would have to word things differently mm -hmm. and drop things and, and not say certain things. Right. You know what I mean? Is it, is it worth it? Ha, have you thought about kind of switching trajectory at some point? And yeah, maybe... I thought about it actually this year. Watching yeah. my last special, I was like, well, I, I think I, I think this. I, I there was a couple things that happened, and and I was like, wow, that's funny. Mm -hmm. Like people would always laugh at this one joke at this part, and I was like, that's funny. Yeah, you know, like I have this joke in my act about role play, but then I would I would go, well, how did you all of a sudden become dirty? Yeah. She's like, I've always been dirty. I'm like, with who? And just the way I said that, there's no swear. There's nothing. Right. In, people laugh. Yeah. 
I'm like, that's interesting to me. Yeah. That, you know, uh, just that line. Yeah. And the psychology behind the line mm -hmm. that all guys get, like, what with who, whore? Right, yeah, exactly. you know, I don't have to say don't with have who, to say whore. whore. Yeah, you just have I don't to. have to say, you know, you don't touch my dick ever, you fucking slut bag. Yeah. Which guys would still, people would still laugh at. Right. Um, but, you know, stuff like that. I don't know. I, I would, I like, there's a thing in that, too, where... I'm at I'm at the point now where I'm I'm I have to come up with a new hour. I have to do new stuff, and I'm you know the first thing out of the gate is fucking in my tiny home. Yeah, that's my, you know those are the things that fuck with me in life. Yeah. Sex has always been a hard thing for me. Yeah, you know food. There's this. I mean, you can't but, get away but from. But you can do it, and you can do it if you if you kind of reprogram how you're going to say it. Hmm. You can you can talk about it hmm. without getting as graphic yeah. and that's kind of a fun thing to do i did a whole clean album just because i was like let's see if i can do it yeah. and it's the first time my parents came out and saw me to see me headline <laughs> right because they don't want to see a lot of the stuff i'm talking about but i was like i'm gonna do one oh, that they can come and watch and all, they enjoyed it all my i have a big family that would probably be more happy like all these yeah. people could bring their friends yeah like people don't come see me because i'm so i swear i right. say all this fucked up shit and uh, you never know what i'm gonna say but right. that's kind of my thing my allure of coming to see my show, it's never going to be the same, even though if it's the same jokes. Yeah. I'm fucking them up. I'm going in, I'm dipping in the crowd and coming back to the joke. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, it interests me now. It does. I, I, it to, um, well, because when you, and you take bits and just with your physicality and your, your ability to deliver jokes, you could do a clean comedy set. You could do it. Yeah. Just because, like, just like when you're talking about like a smell. It doesn't have to be a bad pussy smell. You could just be like, yeah. Yeah, I was, you know, cleaning Max's jujitsu bag out. And that, like, your yeah. are like, they get laughs. Yeah. But I could talk about, you know, the, the smell. Yeah. I could talk about sex smells. Yeah. You know, you can, you can do I could it. talk about it. And I could say it smells like my son's jujitsu bag. Right. Yeah. And there you go. That's clean. Yeah. yeah. And, and then people could relate to that. Yeah. And, and what, clean to me isn't, you know, uh, Jerry Seinfeld clean. Right. That's boring. Right. Well, yeah. <laughs> That's fucking boring. Yeah. You hear that, yeah. Jerry? Ah, I, I mean, I, I God, whatever. Right. I don't care. He's He's got a mil billion yeah. dollars. Yeah. Does he, I don't fucck him mad at him. I don't care if he's offended. The fuck him. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> I really don't. It's like, I, know, I know. I know. But, um, you know, I don't. I can watch five minutes of that shit. Mm -hmm. Did you ever notice? I don't care about that shit. Right. I care about your I care about you, what affects you. Yeah. I care about what may, what, you, what you hate. What, you know, like that tiny house joke. I literally drooled on my wife's back. <laughs> and it made me sad. I yeah. felt so bad. And she was like, did you finish? It's like, no, I, sp I, have, I spit on you. Like, I, <laughs> I hit my head and, and she's laughing. Those moments. Yeah. To be able to tell people those moments that I'm not supposed to. Those are the moments I'm not supposed to tell you. Right. Those are my private moments yeah. that me and my wife have that I'm not supposed to tell you. Yeah. I am the guy who says that. Right. The intimacy and the vulnerability is what gets me. Being vulnerable on stage in front of a room full of people that I don't know mm -hmm. and may never see again and may not like what I say is what gets me. That's the charge. That's the that's the passion. I'm going on stage. I'm taking what, and they go, is that real? hundred percent. Yeah. You know well, what I'm, I mean? I'm, I'm working on a chunk right now about, I was, I was a bedwetter till I was 14 <laughs> and tapping into that. And what's hard about talking about that is I don't want them to feel sorry for me. Right. I want them to feel that I'm okay with it now. Right. And so we can, we can laugh at the, the sad thing that really was traumatic and sucked as much as it did. I'm over it. So you can be over it, but let's laugh about it because no it, sleepovers. It, yeah. Oh, but I still did them in the in the yeah. Uh, and that's kind of one of the things like when kids would find out, they would you know be mean because kids are mean. Yeah, because yeah, a chubby kid pissed the bed. Yeah, he pissed on my bunk bed. That yeah. son of a bitch. But I have to. I wore diapers. You did not. I did. So what age? Till I was fourteen. Dude, I was I, such you know, a small. Can kid, I say though. something to you? Yeah. I got sober at fifteen. <laughs> I'm, I'm, <laughs> I literally. <laughs> I got. My, it was so far uh, apart. 
<laughs> but the thing is, we still would have been friends. Well, we absolutely would have been friends. We would have been friends because uh, you would have been nice to me because I would have uh, stole money to give you to buy uh, booze. Sure, and I would have got you as many free diapers as you want. Yeah. I would have broken and stole diapers for you. Yeah. Um, that's funny. I'll tell you what I did, and I've, I've said this before, uh, and I did this to the first day I went to jail. Uh -huh. The day I went to juvenile jail is when I stopped. That's what he cured you, by the way. Yeah. If you had gone to juvenile jail, you would have stopped peeing the bed. Oh, uh, yeah. Probably wouldn't have slept. <laughs> <laughs> I used to uh, suck my fingers. Mm -hmm. And pick your nose? Pick one. No. I, I, and I would take the boogers and I, I would roll them on my upper lip like this yeah. into a perfect sphere. And I would sit there and watch cartoons and do yeah. that till I was uh, 13. Wow. I think I was 13. Maybe maybe twelve, and uh, yeah, I remember the. Fr and, uh, That's just making me think of all the boogers in my nose right now, and how I kind of want to pick them, and I and I will later. <laughs> I don't understand how I didn't suck my thumb. Yeah, you know what I mean. And I just I did this, I, yeah. and my mother let me do it, which was fucked. Yeah, and I was thirteen. I was using drugs. I was getting in trouble. I was getting in crime, and I got arrested. I went to jail at mm -hmm. the Charlestown Y, one of the worst juvenile lockups in Boston, mm -hmm. and um. I had to sleep in a, a room full of bunk beds with other kids, around maybe 10 other kids. And I, I was like, if I get caught sucking my fingers and rolling boogers, I'm going to get killed. Yeah. You know? So I never did. I just didn't. My brain, this is how powerful your yeah. brain is from fear. I never did it again. Yeah. It was the last time I ever did it was that night. And that's what uh, people are trying to used to teach like that that's how we were raised as kids right we're like if they're so scared they will stop doing it but that's not they don't understand that's not the healthiest way to get a kid to stop doing something yeah but it does it's got results for a long time it's got Fe results fe fear gets results yeah i didn't quit drinking yeah. or using drugs or getting arrested yeah but i did quit picking my nose and rolling boogers yeah yeah, for which fear. Yeah. and I've had the fear of Max doing it. Like I yeah. like, is it hereditary? You yeah. know what I mean? Is it instinctually in my people? Right. You know, we're some weirdos from fucking Sicily. Yeah. They used to eat boogers. We're they just, gotta isolate that gene. Yeah, right. <laughs> they yeah. Gotta be like, oh, he's got the gene. You get the twenty three and me test, and he's like, yeah. oh, he's the thumb sucking booger roller. He's got the he's the Italian fucking booger eater. Yeah. You know? Um yeah, it was disgusting. Very disgusting. So I feel for you. Do you still pick your nose and eat it though? No, not anymore. Okay. No, I'm not into I'm, boogers. Okay, I'm not into them, but I still do it. Some you time. you eat a booger? Yeah, we talked about it on the radio the other oh. day. Like Mary and I are, uh, we pick our nose, and I I'm more of a flicker than an eater, but sometimes it's just the only way to go. <laughs> Dude, I'm a flicker. <laughs> yeah, I'll pick my nose yeah. and flick it. There's yeah. nothing better than being in a quiet room. Yeah, picking your nose, flicking, and then waiting for the click. Yeah. To where it ever hits. So it hits, yeah. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. I love that, but I don't know. I, you eat it? I've, uh, yeah. I mean, it's usually more of an in the mouth and spit. I'll do that if it's where? A thing. Hey, out the window or so just you're a, a taster. You're not an eater. I mean, I, they get eaten too. I'm not gonna. I'm. A, I'm. Why do you? I eat check them? every boxes because it just goes down. I don't know, man. It's 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 something that I haven't. You're taking Explore. it out of your body yeah. and then putting it back in your body. Yeah, just a different part. It's a transfer. It's disgusting. <laughs> I understand that. Have you ever There's not one part that I don't understand. <laughs> like, I understand it's disgusting the whole way through. But what, what, uh, what have you ever tasted one that was good? What they got, all taste good. What? <laughs> Every single one of them. It's because of the passion. You know, <laughs> the passion's yeah. what makes them taste good. Because I'm so worked up trying to get it out of my nose that once I get it in my mouth, I'm like, yeah, this does taste good. It tastes better than pussy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck me. All right, make sure, listen, guys, subscribe, like, and comment. Yeah. Go down there and support. I know the, the sponsors, you know, we just listen to it. And then go support the sponsors because by doing that, you're getting a deal and they're supporting the show. Uh, keep it on. What was it, like an hour now? We're about an hour 20 in. Hour 20. Great. Yeah. Listen, man. I got a uh, special coming out too. Can I plug that? Yeah, we're going to plug that right yeah. now. All right. Uh, I'm doing, uh, it's coming out November 22nd on my YouTube channel. Yeah. It's called uh, Pure BS. Tell them. Don't tell yeah. me. Oh, it's called Pure BS <laughs> and uh, it's available on YouTube for free. So you can just watch it and uh, let me know what you think. Like, subscribe, share, comment, even like, you know. If you hate it, still comment. Yeah. We just want that engagement. Yeah. I didn't even have the camera on me the whole time. I'm you did. Stupid. It was on you. Do it again. Do it again. Yeah. Right. Is we it on you? It. You had yeah, it. It's on, it's on me now. My special is called. Yeah. My stupid reactions. <laughs> yeah. 
My special is called Pure BS. It's available on YouTube on November 22nd. So watch it. Like, subscribe, comment, even if you hate it. Just uh You just engage. redid it again? They yeah. heard that part. I don't care. <laughs> I listen, one of the funniest dudes I know, and you got to go check it out, uh, Bill Squire. Check it out. It's for free, which is new. I guess everybody's doing Mine's not for free. I bought it's, yours, though. You did. Yeah. You should buy mine, too. LouisCK.com, Killbox. It's available up there. Um, but well, that my, Here's the difference. I don't even like... They're called specials. Right. Mine cost $1,000. Like I, <laughs> it looks That's a special good. price. It's a very special price. Why did you film it? Uh, the funny stop in Cuyahoga Falls. Uh, okay, me and my buddy, we set up some cameras. We're, I, I don't got the budget to to spend. Yeah, yeah, no. But yeah, if yeah. I'm gonna put it up for free, I'm gonna you know. But it looks good and it sounds good. Uh, you just need to be funny. Yeah, and it's funny. And, and people find it. Yeah. And that's what people want now. They yep. just want to find funny and, yep. and laugh. So, fuck it. Check it out. Um, make sure you subscribe, like, and comment here on the YouTube page. And, and Patreon people, God bless you. I love you. All the ladybugs. If you're not a Patreon subscriber, I know I know it's a lot to do. There's a lot of shit that I got to get you special. I got to do this. But that's how you support. We, you know, we're, you, we're not, you know, we can't get on mainstream anymore. It doesn't happen as as it used to. So what we can do is go right to you directly. Cut out the middleman. No agents, no managers, no networks. There's nobody saying, oh, you're too dirty. You're getting me the way you want me, right? And that's how you do it. You support me through those things. Uh, also, uh, comicwearables.com, you can go there and check it out. And I got a passcode, Ladybugs. If you type that in, you get 20% off of all my YKWD gear. Uh, this has been a... Dude, I'm so glad we did this. Oh, me too, man. I, uh, last time I was on was... Uh, 10 years ago, and it was like me and a bunch of other comics, so I didn't get to say a lot. So right. it was nice to have a one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, dude, you got to check yeah. him out. Bill Squire, man. And uh, and I'll see you guys next week on You Know What, Dude? See ya. You've been listening to the YKWD Podcast. Thanks for listening. Now go back to your shitty jobs. Shitty jobs.